Let's look at a very simple example of how to use remote containers in Visual Studio Code. I have a Python project here, and I'm looking at the README, and it says to run it, I need to open the app and then run Python app.py. And that doesn't work. And it doesn't work because Python is not installed on my system. And so normally I'd have to go out and install Python. But with remote containers, we can run this inside of a container and install Python in that container instead of having to install it on our machine. Okay, so how do we do that? We open the command palette and say add container definition. And then it kind of automatically detects that we have Python, so it puts that to the top of the list, which we'll select. And it wants to know what version. We'll just take three. And it's like, do you want Node as well? We'll say, yeah, sure, why not? Okay. So what happens is we get a new folder here called dev container. Inside of that, there are two files. There's a Docker file and a dev container file. The dev container file does a couple things. It points to the Docker file, which is important. The Docker file defines the container that's being built, which is a Python container. And then this line here just installs node. If you're not familiar with Docker, all this looks pretty soupy and confusing. I wouldn't worry about it too much. This file over here is a little bit easier to understand. Some of the args that are passed here, we want version 3 of Python. We want to install Node. The version that we want to install is LTS. These are settings down here that will get copied into Visual Studio Code when we actually run this in the container. So it's sort of setting up the optimal Python environment. These are extensions that will automatically be installed in Visual Studio Code so that when somebody opens this, they automatically have the best experience. And then there's some other things that we can do, like we can automatically run the pip command, which is a really nice thing to do because this project won't run without the requirements being installed first. So that command I ran would have failed anyway. And then lastly, this is the user we run the container as instead of the root user, just for extra added security. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and reopen this in a container. So we can say rebuild and reopen in container, and we'll select rebuild and reopen in container. Okay, this is going to build the dev container based on that configuration file that we looked at and the Docker file. And those things were automatically added to our project by Visual Studio Code. Now notice that we got an error here. So let's check that out. If we look at the error down here in the terminal, you'll see that there's a file sharing has been canceled. So if you see this and you're on Windows, let me show you what it is. It's Docker. Docker, you can either run it with the WSL2 based engine you won't get this error, or if you're running it on the Windows side, you need to add this folder that you want to share to the file sharing. So let's come up here and add this folder. Okay, so now we have that folder added. So we can apply and restart, and this will restart Docker. We can select Rebuild and Reopen in Container, so we'll do that. Now it's installing our server, our little VS Code server, pulling up our environment, running all of our commands. Okay, so it's done. And now our container is up. Looks like VS Code, doesn't it? Looks like what we had before. But it's different because we're actually now running in a terminal. And if we open the command line, you'll see we, we have a Linux terminal now, which looks quite a bit different than what we had before, which was PowerShell. And so we can now run this. So if we look, it says, just wants us to run Python app.py. So let's do that. And it just works. And then we can say open in browser. And what it does is it forwards a port over like this locally from the container. So it looks like it's running on my local machine because it is. But it's actually running inside the container. It just forwards it for me outside of the container. And there's our project. There's lots of other things you can do with dev containers. You can add a lot more configuration. Check out the links in the video below to go through this tutorial on your own and check out the sample project. Thanks for watching.